Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. It is Monday, October 25th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw Heart Seltzer, it is made pure. The text line open now as well, 304-523-2275. We got a lot to get into. There was a huge info dump on Friday. We're sort of in a holding pattern now as far as where Marshall might end up in conference realignment. We're going to talk about all of that later on. Get your text in. All I know is Friday was fun, and we should have a lot of carryover. The weekend was fun. I don't know about you, but the weekend was fun. Cincinnati Bengals rolled the Baltimore Ravens 41-17 yesterday. Bengals are now 5-2. This is their best start since 2015. Joe Burrow. He's the number one draft pick for a reason. Career best 416 yards, three touchdowns. Jamar Chase, your rookie receiver, season high, 201 receiving yards, and he had a touchdown as well. He has definitely changed the landscape for the Cincinnati Bengals. This might be a combination for years to come. So I'm here for the Bengals announcing to the rest of the division that they are a threat. At 5-2, and two, they're looking really good. So with the NFL season rolling on for the Bengals, things not looking so good for the Cleveland Browns as quarterback Baker Mayfield remains out with a left shoulder injury. Could sideline him for the game against the Steelers this week. I mean, that's a game you don't want to miss if you're a Cleveland quarterback or Cleveland player. You talk about maybe the Bengals' dismay for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's Cleveland and Pittsburgh. That's That's the hate. That's the rivalry there. I mean, sure, the Bengals and Steelers have gone at it for a long time, but if you're a Steelers fan, you hate the Browns. If you're a Browns fan, you hate the Steelers. And so one of the oldest hate rivalries in the NFL, and Baker Mayfield not on the practice field during the portion of Monday's practice open to reporters, so he might miss that game. Ouch. That's all i got to say is ouch for the Cleveland Browns. They were kind of projected to be a little bit better than what they are. The Steelers... This could be a a golden opportunity for the Steelers to at least claw claw their way back up a little bit. Best way to describe that. So that's uh, some interesting news today for the Browns. And, of course, college football. We're keeping an eye on usually everything that happens. And realignment's kind of taken up most of that. But Texas Tech officially announcing the firing of Coach Matt Wells. The Red Raiders, if you weren't watching, had a two-touchdown halftime lead, home against Kansas State. Below that. So you blow that. And Texas Tech just has not been good, not been relevant really in a long while. And so midseason, you get rid of your coach. Matt Wells, he really just couldn't do anything with that program. I think that has more to do with Texas Tech than Matt Wells. But still, Texas Tech is going to be in a tough situation here Uh You lose your coach midseason. You lose to Kansas State, and maybe 10 years ago that had been okay, but Kansas State hasn't necessarily been that much better over the last few years. So definitely interesting there as far as what's happening today with Texas Tech. But the thing I want to get in with you here coming up, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's going to happen with Marshall and either the Sun Belt or I've heard rumors of the MAC. I'm here to dismiss them. Let's just go ahead and put that out there right now. I am here to dismiss all rumors of Mid-American Conference because I don't think you want to see Marshall go backward. Not to say that's a slight on the Mid-American Conference, but if you're Marshall, you're in a position to go forward. I think the Sun Belt offers you that forward momentum. Is it the best conference out there? No, it's not the best out there. Is it terrible? No, by by any stretch of the imagination, no. It's a pretty good league, actually. I mean, it's not it's not the Big Ten. Okay, let's just go ahead and say that now. Marshall's not moving up to the Big Ten here. Marshall's not moving to the, the ACC. Marshall's not moving up to the SEC. No. Marshall is making, you know, maybe a few years ago, this would have been a lateral when Conference USA was realigning several years ago, this might have been a move backwards. But 
Sun Belt has definitely taken, I think, the um, the situation and run with it. Sun Belt's probably going to win the realignment battle once again here in the so-called Group of Five schools. So we'll get your thoughts on that. That's what I want to do. I'm going to open up the text line for you, 304-523-2275. I want to get your thoughts on this and the fact that we're going to have to wait till at least Thursday or Friday, more likely Friday, I would gather, because, as I mentioned, the info dump comes out on Friday. What's the info dump I'm talking about? Well, you've got Conference USA coming out with a statement. You have Southern Miss possibly, you know, pretty much it's a done deal. And you have the president being announced on Thursday for Marshall University. That's that's what's happening here. You have a, a situation where the Board of Governors is going to wait till Thursday minimum. Going to announce the new president. New president is going to have a say. I said on Friday, why don't you just give that person a phone call, get their thoughts, and go about making this final. That's all you need to do. Do you wait? Do you hold up for the new president and try to make it look like that that person has some input here? Simple phone call. Okay. I would pretty much think the offer has been made and accepted at this point. It's Monday. Thursday is when we're going to find out. I would think the offer has been made and accepted. So all you have to do is make a phone call. Okay, here's what we know. Here's the situation. Here's what we're looking at. What's your input on this? I'll give you my thoughts on this when we continue. We'll take your text at 304-523-2275, 304-523-2275. A lot to kind of catch you up on. And I want to look at what the situation appears to be as far as I'm concerned. My looking at this and what I would do if I had a voice here, if I had the opportunity to make a decision, I'll tell you what I'm looking at and why I'm making the decision, and I'm not hesitating. Start calling the donors, get the cash, make it happen. I think you can pull this off. Marshall going to the Sun Belt? Well, we'll find out later this week. Most likely, but we're going to wait till the president's named before we get that person's input which I think that's a phone call away. You do that here on a Saturday, a Sunday. You do that on a Thursday last week. Hey, you've got the job. If you want it, great, you accept. All right, we've got this little thing that's coming up here. I know you don't take over till next year, but we want to kind of have you have a little bit of say just for appearances. We'll talk about that when we continue. We'll get your text in as well, 304-523-2275. More coming up. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. Our phone lines are open this hour, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. White Claw Heart Seltzer, it is made pure. Paul Swan, your host. Text line's also open, 304-523-2275. Before we hit the phones, I want to remind you, we're here today at the Union Pop and Grill. It's Monday, so you know what that means. $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots every Monday at the Union Pop and Grill. And I'm just going to tell you right now, us, well, the proprietor is here, Herb Stanley. I got the mug early. Halloween party's coming up on Saturday, October 30th. $10 will get you a beautiful 22-ounce logo mug, and you get it filled. So they'll, they'll give you this mug and fill it for you. And then $3 refills and $2 pumpkin shots. So you get that coming up. Halloween party is Saturday, October 30th. I've got the mug. It's beautiful. It's heavy. has a lot of heft to it. But um, let's get your phone calls in. We'll talk about the mug later. <laughs> let's get your phone calls in. we got Mike joining us from Huntington. Go ahead, Mike. You're on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Okay, he is out. We'll get him connected back, and, of course, that opens up the phone line with you. 304-523-2275, 304-523-2275. Also, you can hit us up on 877-420-TALK, 
420-8255. Text line is open for you now at 304-523-2275. That's a multitude of numbers here. One day, we're going to combine it all into one number. Until then, 877-420-8255. And to text at 304-523-2275. So what do we got here? We got Marshall on the precipice of either staying in Conference USA, going to the Sun Belt, and I'm going to dismiss the MAC. I'm just dismissing it now because I don't think herd fans are on board with that at all. There might be some who like the Mid-American Conference, and this isn't a shot at the Mid-American Conference. It's just – the Mid-American Conference isn't going anywhere. It's it's very consistent. It It's nice geography. Yeah, you'll be bussing everywhere. Yeah, you won't be chartering anywhere in the Mid-American Conference. You're going to be bussing. That is a bus league. And those schools like playing each other. It's definitely, it makes sense for the schools that are in the Mid-American Conference. And, and you know, it's, it's got a nice TV package. It's attractive. You like playing on Thursdays. Well, you might be getting that with the Sun Belt anyway, so let me back that one up. But the Mid-American Conference, it's, it's a good conference. It's just not where Marshall needs to be. Marshall needs to be somewhere more southern, I think. Marshall likes being in a more southern league or at least having that sort of southern affinity. And I think the Sun Belt gives that to you. But with that said, first of all, we got to figure out what's happening first on Thursday when the Marshall Board of Governors will get together and we'll find out the new president of Marshall University. And – if you were a betting person right now, if you were going to go to the sports book and bet, it seems like Brad Smith is the odds-on favorite. Maybe not with certain groups. I know there was a, a petition to get him removed, said that there was a lot of conflict of interest there. There are people maybe don't want that as a decision, you know, made. Hey, we don't we want someone in academics. And his credentials, as far as the business world, are impeccable. So I'm not criticizing his qualifications at all. It's just it feels like this is the the ringer. This is the odds-on favorite. I have not seen anything that has deterred me from that. So Brad Smith, I mean, besides, you got a member of the Board of Governors that was advocating for Mr. Smith a few weeks ago, city council, right? You remember the texting? There was a whole deliberation of should you have your phone? During city council meetings now, should you have that here in front of you, being texted while you're doing things by outside parties? And you had Chris Miller, who was um, part of that, and he's on the Board of Governors. So the fix is in, some might be saying, that Brad Smith is going to be the next president. So let's go ahead right now until further notice. Bank on that. Brad Smith, he's going to be your next president. And then... This could be more of a situation where the message goes out. Going to wait till the new president is named. The new president then can have his or her thoughts on this. And I'll still leave some room opening here. You know, I'll just leave it open. Maybe it's not Brad Smith, but whomever the president's going to be can have input. Which my thought is, you've already made the decision. You get on the phone and you say, look, this is what we want to do. What do you think? What's your input here? Because there's still a president that's on the job right now. There is still a president running the university. There's still an interim athletic director running the athletic department right now. So I kind of feel that this holdup might be, this is for optics, someone's optics. So here you have the new president named, and the new president weighs in, and then you have the board of governors the new president, Marshall's going to make the move to the Sun Belt. And so they get the victory, right? The optics here. The Board of Governors has decided this is going to be the best course of action, conferring with the incoming president. This is going to be the best course of action here. And I'm sitting here thinking, who's doing the legwork here right now? Is it the Marshall Board of Governors doing the legwork, or is it Jeff O'Malley doing the legwork here? Is it... President Jerome Gilbert doing the legwork here right now. Who's doing the work? Because if anything, if Jeff O'Malley and President Gilbert say this is the best course of action for Marshall, and last time I checked, they're still getting paid to be the president and interim athletic director, I say make this move. If they, as individuals, deem it the right move. 
Instead, we're waiting here. And it kind of feels like a little grandstanding to me, and I don't like it. I mean, if you want to get input of the next president, and you know the next president, you already know that person's already accepted a job. I don't know what the timetable here. And let, you don't call a meeting, hey, we're going to decide the next president on Thursday without knowing the next president. It's sort of like conference invites. The Sun Belt's not inviting Marshall until Marshall's already accepted the invite. Then the invite goes out. That's how that works. It's, yeah, Marshall submit an application knowing that it's going to be approved, right? You don't just say, hey, we're going to submit an application. Oh, we got your application. Um, thanks, but no thanks. No, that's not how this works. Same thing with presidents. You've already got in your mind, you already know, all right, this is going to be the next president. I know you got to do this open. You have to do this for everyone to see. Sure, transparency. But I, I pretty much feel, all right, it's a done deal. You know the next president. Give that person a phone call. Here's what we got. Here's what we're looking at. What's your input here? Okay. Then you can say you got input. I think you need to move. If you're going to do this, move quickly. Because if you don't, you don't. Old Dominion's leaving. Just get that in your mind right now. Old Dominion is leaving out. Also, the Sun Belt and Southern Miss are going to have a, a, a press conference, according to Brett McMurphy and some other media reports, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. It's going to be on campus. An on-campus announcement to make it official that Southern Miss will move to the Sun Belt. So Southern Miss, is, they're not having problems. Their administration is not having problems right now. They're getting it done and making it happen. Sunbelt is gaining Southern Miss. And you're just waiting now on Old Dominion, James Madison, if that's truly the target, and Marshall to finish this thing out. But the Sunbelt's striking quick, and Southern Miss is striking quick. And so that's going to leave you. If you're in Conference USA, if you're Marshall, you're Conference USA, you're locked in, you're like, yes, we're going to stay here, okay, you got Florida International. You got Louisiana Tech. You got Middle Tennessee. You got UTEP. And you got Western Kentucky. And there's nothing wrong with Western Kentucky. There's nothing wrong with Middle Tennessee. Hey, you know what? FIU, nothing wrong there. Nothing wrong. Nice little Florida trip, right? Travel's not really golden when it comes to Louisiana Tech and UTEP, but this is what you got left. You, you have the, If you stay, because I'm pretty sure Old Dominion might be bolting as well. Southern Miss is definitely bolting. That program's gone. So now this is what you're left with. And you heard some of the teams that have been rumored to be a part of this new conference USA, right? If you haven't, let me read them off to you. UMass, okay? UMass, UConn, Sam Houston State's been thrown out there. New Mexico State's been thrown out there. And Tarleton State. Now, there's nothing wrong with UMass or UConn. These are, these are fine programs, right? Maybe not the strongest football programs. Sam Houston State, New Mexico State, okay. If you were a, a more of a Western centralized conference, which it seems Conference USA is really digging, this is okay. This is fun. Tarleton State, let me tell you about them briefly because I had to do some, some homework there. They're trying to move up. They've done some renovations to their stadium. I've seen their stadium. It looks pretty nice here. They're trying to really move up, get going. They want to really put the energy into being a, a Division One program, and that's fantastic because Marshall at one time tried to put the energy into moving back to Division One, and there have been other schools that have made that jump, and that's great. But do you want to travel to Sam Houston State, New Mexico State, Tarleton State? You want to travel to UTEP? You want to travel to Louisiana Tech on a regular basis? You want to do all that? If you do, I got a conference for you. It's called Conference USA. You stay put, you're fine. But at the end of the day, you're going to be busing places anyway. I mean, sure, you might have to charter. If you like chartering, if that's your thing, you want to charter everywhere, you'll be chartering all right. You'll be definitely chartering to a lot of these no i think you need to be in more of a southern regional conference i'm okay with that and yes you might be bussing a little bit more okay that's i get that i, I really do i get that but you're bussing anywhere texter writes i totally agree paul the sunbelt move is a move of necessity just announce and be done with it the vast majority of herd fans are behind this move not moving to the sunbelt would be disastrous 
for the athletic program as a whole long term. I agree. The, thank you. I appreciate that. I agree. I think you got to move now, and you got to put yourself in a position where you can build. You can build from the Sun Belt. If you're trying to elevate the program, I think you're going to have a better shot of it in conference that has like-minded schools, Sun Belt, because there's not going to be much left of Conference USA, and let's be honest here. What are you, what are you losing here? Well, if you stay in Conference USA, you're going to be, you're going to be losing a lot. But the Sun Belt has moved the needle a little bit more. The Sun Belt has rehabilitated its image. The Sun Belt has built itself up. I mean, we're looking at schools like Coastal Carolina ranked. There are other programs that are ranked in the Sun Belt. Will a Sun Belt team get into the, the Access Bowl maybe this year? Uh, maybe not. Maybe that's Cincinnati. Does Cincinnati get into the playoff this year? Probably not. We'll see what the committee has to say about that. But you open this thing up to uh, expand in a few more teams, I, I think you have a, a genuine shot here getting into the playoff. But I think you have a better you have a better ground to stand on because Conference USA is dissolving. You, you get out of that. You get off of the sinking ship, and you go to where there's a life raft, and it's the Sun Belt. And the Sun Belt genuinely seems to want you. The Sun Belt wants you. Appalachian State's coach, when asked about it, was talking about, hey, you know what? I'd like to see Marshall get in this conference. I think we'd have fun with them as a rival. Yeah, I'm with you, Coach. I'm with you as well. And so there's another rumor that's going out. And, again, if you think Marshall to the Mac is a rumor that you want to see happen, I'm killing it now. I say no. Executive privilege here. I'm stamping that no. Moving on, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. I've heard this as well, that maybe WKU and Middle looking to go to the MAC. And I text a couple of people today, not necessarily in the inner circle of knowledge, but right there. They share an office with the circle maybe. They're, they're on the outside of the circle. you got to go past them to maybe get to the circle. And I asked a couple of people, hey, what do you think? Is this real? And uh, I was told that uh, that's not where Western Kentucky is looking to go. So maybe that's not happening. I, I don't see that happening here with Western and Middle. And the Sun Belt, probably not an option right now for Western and Middle because there's a lot of bad blood there. I've actually confirmed that with some folks at at least Western. They tell me, yeah, that's, that's probably not happening because there's some bad blood still, for how it all went down. And I get it. You want to, you don't want to look like you're bringing them back. You're getting some leftovers. And you bring in Marshall. Marshall's got an instant rivalry with Appalachian State. And, and I'm going to fire up that Georgia Southern rivalry because I really love those Southern Conference days. And I'm showing my age a little bit, but I really love those days in the Southern Conference. But look at it from my point of view. You want to go into a league with Appalachian State, Georgia State, Georgia Southern. You want to go into this league, Coastal Carolina. You want to go into this league? Or do you want to stay where you have a league that will consist of Middle, UTEP, Louisiana Tech, FIU, possibly Western. Okay, you got that. That's fine. Nothing nothing bad to say about those schools. Nothing bad about those schools at all to say. The travel to UTEP is not fun. Would you rather travel to Georgia State or Louisiana Tech? You tell me. But if you're adding to this thing and you're adding schools like New Mexico State, Tarleton State, again, on the move up, sure, nothing bad to say about them. Sam Houston State, UMass, UConn, is this the collection of schools you want to be a part of? Sure, you can't get into the AAC. I don't know if that's a collection of schools. You look at the collection of schools that are, are going to be in that league, and you'll be chartering a lot. Yeah, okay, if you like to charter, that's your, that's your league. But at the end of the day, I think this is going to be a better fit with what is available for Marshall. Is there a perfect home for the herd? I don't know if a perfect home exists. Because right now what we're seeing is just basically the G5 schools reshuffling the deck. And right now it seems like the Sun Belt's got the better hand. The Sun Belt 
doing things that make sense for the league, for the fans. Because I can get behind this a lot better than I could maybe what the American is going to turn out to be. And, you know, I could be completely wrong there, but I think at the end of the day, you have a league that wants Marshall, and if Marshall can just get the ball rolling faster, that's what we want here. Instead, we have this situation where you're waiting and waiting for a new president to be announced. Okay, got to get that person's input. That's a phone call away. Unless you truly don't know and I don't believe that to be the case. If you truly don't know the next Marshall president until Thursday, we're just going to deliberate that now. I mean, are you just going to lock yourself in a room and say, okay, we're not coming out until we're done here and we name a president? You, you've made the invitation because you know which person you want to extend that job offer to. You know. You already have that. That's, I can't believe you haven't. And if that's the case, wow, I would – not believe that you already extend the invitation you've got your candidate they've accepted and then you just make a phone call here or you make several phone calls get on zoom here you go it's like here's what we're doing here's where we believe that marshall should be because let's be honest it's not as if the marshall board of governors has at times gone against the wishes of the president of the university. It's not as if the Board of Governors has said, you know what, you're right, President Gilbert, we're going to keep Mike Hamrick. You're right, President Gilbert, we're going to do this. The Board of Governors has its own feelings on things. The president has his point of view on things. You have a a very capable athletic director in Jeff O'Malley, He's interim right now, but he's very capable. Knows what he's doing. He didn't just, um, as Bob Pruitt would once say, he didn't get off the pickle boat just just now. He's been around for a while. He's been around the block. He knows what he's doing. So I have complete confidence in uh, what Jeff O'Malley's doing. And uh, you know what? I think Jerome Gilbert has been one of the finest presidents Marshall University has ever had. I hate to see him go. I would trust his judgment. He loves Marshall. He, day one, became a son of Marshall Whatever that guy and O'Malley have to say, Mr. O'Malley, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Malley say, that should be what's happening. But think about it. UMass, UConn, Sam Houston State, Tarlington State maybe, New Mexico State, EKU. Hey, Western Kentucky needs a buddy. EKU, there you go. And, again, nothing wrong with those programs. It's just where do you want to be realigned with? Where do you want to go? Do you want to be in a a conference that looks like it's falling apart? Do you want to go – in a stable but not forward-moving conference like the MAC? Do you want to go in a conference that seems to have a upward trajectory? I'm picking the upward trajectory. I'm picking the Sun Belt, the best situation of all the options. Phone line, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Text line is 304-523-2275. we got more coming up. Today's edition of The Drive coming to you live from the Union Pop and Grill here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Our phone lines this hour brought to you by White Claw at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Phone lines brought to you by White Claw Heart Seltzer. It is made pure, and the text line is open at 304-523-2275. 304-523-2275 to be a part of today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So what do you think about this? Get your thoughts in this now. You've heard mine. I think you should just make it happen, get it going, and let's be done. I, I don't care. As far as the announcement, the theatrics, the the optics, I don't care about that. I just want what's best for the Thundering Herd and Marshall as a program. As an alum, as an alum, I'm not even talking about as a fan. You know, none of that. I'm talking about as an alum, what's best for the athletic department. And you hire an athletic director to run your department. 
And sure, the Board of Governors did not want to renew the contract of the athletic director. And so you have an interim athletic director who has been in the program for a long time. And I think he does a fantastic job. Whatever he does, Jeff O'Malley is that good of a guy, not just as far as a person, but as far as his ability to run an athletic department. So if he's on board, what else do you need? Okay. Your current president, who, again, has been, I think, one of the best presidents in a, a long time to grace the hallways of Old Main and be a part of the university. Jerome Gilbert has done a fantastic job. Okay, let's say he's on board with this. Whatever the decision is, whatever this message is, is it stay, is it go? I'm thinking it's go. And now you have to just wait until you get the input of an athletic, I don't want to, I don't want to say the committee, the, uh, yeah, maybe the, the committee and the uh, board of governors, the athletic committee. I, I don't know if, you know, that body wants its input on top of a hire of a new president. If there's some sort of, okay, you can't do this without us, and we want to do this with the new president, which will not be taking the job until next year, get that person's input. Uh, okay, you want to do that, that's fine. Put that person on the phone and say, okay, we're going to decide this. Here's the offer that's on the table. Here's what it's going to take to make this happen. We think we can do it. We think it's going to be better for the university in the long run. What do you think? Just get your input on. You see anything? Yeah, are you okay with this? I mean, you're the new guy, and yeah, your first day on the job will be n- next year. So what do you think here? It's real simple. Phone call, Zoom call, text, do both. You can do, you can do all of that. Get that person's input. Okay, thank you. This is what we pretty much think the decision is going to be. You know, do you see anything that stands out? Oh, you want to stay in Conference USA? Uh, okay, what? Why? Or hey, oh, you want to stay in the MAC? Why? Everyone else is on board with this. No, I, I think it's theatrics, completely. I'm, I'm sure that'll tick a few people off for me saying it, and that's fine. I get it. It's uh, it's theatrics as far as I'm concerned. This is the opportunity. If the opportunity is there, take it because it's going to be a stronger situation for Marshall. If you stay, again, let me remind you, if you stay in Conference USA, it's going to include FIU. FIU is not going anywhere. Louisiana Tech's not going anywhere anytime soon. Middle's not going anywhere. UTEP, definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Western Kentucky, probably not, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Western can slide into Marshall's slot. I've heard that. You have those schools because I don't see Old Dominion sticking around much longer. If Old Dominion could have kept Southern Miss in this league and maybe got Liberty, because Liberty doesn't seem to be interested now. And it looks like James Madison probably would be more interested in the Sun Belt at this point than Conference USA. What's that leave you? Well, some of the teams that we've talked about rumored include Sam Houston State, New Mexico State, Tarleton State. UConn and UMass, okay? That's what your conference might look like. Marshall and Sam Houston State. Are you ready for that? Is that your conference um, is that your conference opponent, your conference game of the week there? No. Marshall and New Mexico State. You ready for that? You, you'll have to charter there to get there, I'm sure. But are you ready for that? Probably not. No. You, you take what makes, I think, more sense overall. And, of course, this is on top of the fact that soccer is going to get hit. Soccer is going to get hit somehow. You're going to have to make sure to soften the blow for soccer. The good news is soccer has a little, little swagger about it. A little, little. It has some currency because it won the national championship. And it's a really good program. So what do you do in that regard? And there have been the rumors that maybe the Sun Belt will fire back up. Soccer for men. Okay. What's this league going to look like? Well, if Marshall is in this league, Coastal Carolina is in this league, then you have the possibility of Kentucky. You think Kentucky's staying in a, uh, a soccer league with Sam Houston State? If Sam Houston State plays soccer, you think that's happening? Probably not. 
South Carolina. You see South Carolina heading out to New Mexico State for a Conference USA soccer showdown. Probably not happening. Probably not happening. You see West Virginia heading out to Tarleton State for a Conference USA men's soccer showcase. Probably not happening. So here we are. Here we are as far as what's happening. Are we going to see this move happen to the Sun Belt and then what's going to happen to soccer? Uh, Texter writes, uh, speaking of soccer, Texter writes, uh, any news on what will happen to men's soccer? Saw some speculation Sun Belt may restart soccer and the affiliates. Uh, so, yeah, I, I got on this before I got your text. But uh, text reads, um, WVU, South Carolina, UK, come to the Sun Belt as affiliates. Hopefully this is scenario that occurs. Uh, they'll consider adding FIU as well as an affiliate. This lineup in the Sun Belt Conference would be arguably the second best soccer conference in the country behind the ACC. Um, there's some ground there. There's some ground to say uh, yes to that. I look at the Conference USA leftovers because you're losing Charlotte. Charlotte's going to be playing soccer in the American. And the American soccer probably will be better with with a a program like Charlotte, UAB. You you could see a situation where FIU might see this as, you know what? No, we're not. um, We're not doing this. Would you, with the schools you're bringing in, would soccer, men's soccer, be continue to be sponsored? Would that be a thing? I mean, that's a, that's a thing here we got to look at. What happens to Conference USA when the new league – let me rephrase that. It's not a new league. When the, the new membership is finally put together, if this thing doesn't dissolve, and whatever it is, you know, will it try to maintain its uh, – which was a signature sport for the league until, well, just a few days ago, soccer. What do you try to do here? And, again, I think they're trying to – as a league, maybe get a little bit more Midwestern, a little bit more Texas-centric here, a little bit more in between the Mountain West of the American. You know, I don't know what they're looking at here, but they're definitely uh, – the offices are based in Texas, so they're definitely looking at Texas. See, again, Sam Houston State, New Mexico State. And these are rumored schools. Nothing is official. Nothing is out there to, to say that there have been conversations other than some various media reports. And, and again, I'm going to qualify that. These are, these are just rumors right here. But this is, this is your potential here. I, I think wherever Marshall goes, as far as soccer is concerned, I think you're going to have some other programs as well. I don't think Marshall's leading the charge, but I think you have some like-minded athletic departments when it comes to soccer I think you're going to have Marshall and West Virginia in a good situation. Until the Big 12 decides to sponsor soccer, I don't think West Virginia is going back to the MAC. I don't think uh, West Virginia would definitely uh, want to be a part of a depleted conference USA either. Final thoughts when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. I got asked this um, in the in-studio audience section of the show today, so I need to put this out there. Uh, Marshall University men's basketball team set to host an inter-squad scrimmage tomorrow, 6 p.m., in the Cam Henderson Center, the event is free, open to the public. The gates open at 5.30. Fans are asked to enter through the 3rd Avenue entrance at the top of the ramp and sit in the north end of the arena, side opposite the benches. So you can check in starting at 5.30. Gates are open, free to the public. But you got to, uh, you got to enter through the 3rd Avenue entrance. you got to sit in the north end of the arena, side opposite the benches. But it's free to the public. So there you go. A little basketball action to uh, get you through the early part of the week. Now, we're here at the Union Pub and Grill on a Monday. Don't forget, $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots every Monday at the Union Pub and Grill. And if you get down here tonight, you get an opportunity to control some of these TVs here. Just change some of these channels. You could watch Monday Night Football tonight between the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, we'll have that game for you as well right here on ESPN 94.1 at AM 930. 
NBA action tonight, Cleveland at Denver. That's going to be a 9 o'clock game. So if you're here late, you can watch a little Cleveland Cavaliers action. NHL, what I call the three area teams, not Toronto, but at Carolina. Because, again, Carolina, that's, that's a West Virginia team. Washington at Ottawa and Dallas at Columbus. Okay, all the three, Columbus probably the the most area team of the area teams of the ones playing tonight, uh, followed by Carolina, then maybe Washington. Pittsburgh trumps all unless you um, – well, if you, you, you leave Cabell County, Pittsburgh trumps all. I'll just say that right now. We'll go there. So that's what's happening tonight. And you can watch all of that here at the Union Pub and Grill. we got a few minutes to go. Your text to join us, it's real simple. You can text us at 304-523-2275, 304 523-2275. Texter writes, there are three boats left on the dock. A John boat, a pontoon, and a yacht. Stop with politics and get on the yacht. Will the Mac be the pontoon? That's um, that's my question. Is the Mac the pontoon? Is the Sun Belt the yacht? The Sun Belt's the yacht. Of the boats that are out there, the Sun Belt's the yacht. It's probably the best option for Marshall. You could have maybe jumped on board here sooner. We could have this huge press conference tomorrow, the next day, announcing all these members. You want to be the last team in? You want to be the last team in the Sun Belt? I mean, if, if you get in, you get in. It doesn't matter what your, what your order of admission is. There's no ranking there. But do you want to be the last team in? Are you waiting for politics? Are you waiting for optics? Or are you genuinely, and I'll, I'll leave that open. I will leave that on the table. Are you genuinely waiting to name a new president on Thursday and you don't know that candidate yet that's going to be elevated? You haven't fully made that decision and you're going to elevate one of these candidates to the office of president here for Marshall University. And then you're going to get that person's input. Whereas I'm looking at this I would cover all my bases. If you don't know which person is going to be named to the office of president of Marshall University, call them all. Say, okay, hey, we're we're here. We got an early situation here. This is where we're going. What's your thought? Okay, thank you. We'll let you know if you get the job on Thursday. Thanks for taking the call. Call the next one up. Hey. This is what we're, we're looking at doing. This is all we had. Yeah, you, you, you would share that information. I mean, is there anything that's um, other than, you know, maybe you don't want one of the candidates to leak something, which I don't think the candidates would do. They, they, seem, they seem like nice people. Or have you already named the president in, in your mind and everyone has done the straw poll or you've maybe already said, look, if we offer you the job, do you say yes? And then you know already in your mind that it's going to be, I don't know, I'll throw this as an example, Brad Smith. So you know it's going to be Brad Smith. Don't you call Brad and say, okay, this is, this is where we're at here. Yeah, we're going to extend you the invitation to be president. If you, if you say yes, we're extending it to you. And this is the first thing that we've got going. You know, This is happening before you officially take the job. What do you think? We would like just your input so you – don't walk into this cold. What do you think? And that's a simple fix right there. You don't have to wait till Thursday. Instead, we're going to have to grandstand a little bit, name the president, and then we'll come up with some grand press conference or grand announcement. And after consulting with the new president to take the job next year, this is the direction we're going. You know what? The current president, I think, knows what he's doing. I think the current interim athletic director knows what he's doing. I think you can do this and get a phone call in to the incoming president as well. Make it happen. It could have happened tomorrow. With that, all that said, with all of that said, we're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget the Halloween party is Saturday, October 30th. You get that $10 22-ounce logo mug filled. And then you get $3 refills, $2 pumpkin shots. You got to come down and get that so you can be a part of the Halloween party. We appreciate you being with us today here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.